as we continue in this series on the uh, four harvests of God, uh, we want to take a look at some scriptures that indicate uh, what will be happening during that time um, and our indicators of the harvest. One of the things we need to realize is that the, the last days and the final harvest will be a full culmination of what God is doing and what God has done throughout time. The, the um, analogy often used here is that of a symphony. And in the final movement of the symphony, the climaxes of the other movements are brought in and taken to a higher place. And that is uh, a tap and chat of what God is doing in these last days with this final harvest. So I want to uh, move now <clears throat> into more teaching concerning the wheat harvest. Uh, in Ruth 2 and 23, So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz, to glean under the end of the barley harvest and the harvest of wheat, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. The preparation and manifestation of the bride will come during the barley and wheat harvest, or during the harvests of the wheat, the wheats. And, and, and as we will find out in this wheat harvest, there's more to harvest than just gathering in souls. But there is a harvest that is specific uh, that deals with the wheat throughout Scripture and a type there. Um, in uh, First Samuel 6 and 13, And they of Bashemish were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. Now remember, this is the barley harvest is first, then the wheat harvest. The wheat harvest in the valley. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. I believe this indicates that in the final harvest there will be a return of the manifest presence of God during the spiritual equivalent of the wheat harvest. And we'll talk more about that wheat harvest uh, as we go along. In Jeremiah 41 and 8, But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat, of barley, and of oil, and of honey. So he forbear and slew them not among their brethren. This, the, the aspect I want to bring out on this is that wheat, barley, oil, and honey are considered treasures by God. We need to consider treasures what God considers treasures. And the harvest is bringing in treasures into his kingdom and bringing in treasures that he calls treasures and the spiritual equivalent of these four things. In Matthew 3 and 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, gathers wheat into the garner, but he'll burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And so we see that the final harvest is also a time of uh, purging his floor. The processes of purging with the wheat is important in the day of harvest. You don't just gather in the wheat, but you must finish processing it and purifying it. And so there's going to be a processing go on even after the wheat harvest is gathered that purifies and purges the floor and gets rid of the chaff. Now, we come to uh, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And although um, the parable of the sower is important, and we'll deal with that in the next lesson, it's very important to catch this uh, Matthew thirteen twenty five and 30. And Jesus is uh, speaking here principles of the harvest. While men, men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared also the tares. So the servants of the householder came and said unto, her, unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, let, lest while you gather up the terrors, you root up also the wheat with them. 
And here is a principle that the church needs to get a hold of. It is not tolerance that we're talking about today. Tolerance is not the issue. The issue is if you tear up the tares before the wheat, then some of the wheat will be damaged and not grow to full maturity. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. The first to be gathered out of the harvest are the tares, not the wheat. The tares are not left, the tares are taken, and the wheat is left. Selah, think on these things. Tares are sown among the wheat, not elsewhere. In other words, I expect in our churches to find tares. I expect in the things that God is doing, there to be tares sown among the wheat, alongside the wheat. Our tendency is to want to remove the tares as soon as we see they are there. God says don't do it. Removing the wheat before the time of harvest impedes the growth of the wheat. By rooting up the tares, the growth of some of the wheat that is important to the harvest could be ruined. The health of the harvest is more important than the uprooting of the tares right away. Oh, I wish we could hear that. Let them both grow together until harvest time. Then the Lord, not me, not the denomination, not the organizational heads, not the fellowship heads, but the Lord will send forth reapers to take the tares out first. I wonder what the, the, the reapers, what sickle they will use. Will they use doctrine? Will they use good works? Will they use supernatural events? You see, the wheat gathers unto the Lord. Tares gather unto everything else. And so some of these coming along and gathering people unto themselves because of certain things they teach or preach might be tares. They might be gathering tares together. But the harvest will be gathered into his barn, the place of his preparation. Selah, think on these things. Here's our contact information. And uh, just let me mention that you can send questions to the snail mail address. If you do not have a, an email address or prefer to send questions that way, uh, the cell phone please use sparingly as it's the only phone I have and uh, we use it for other things as well. There you have uh, also our, our uh, website address on which you will find um, courses that we've written and uh, that can be taken for uh, credits towards ecclesiastical degrees. Uh, the Ecclesiastical Degree Granting Body is the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership. Uh, if you have questions, please send them through the email address. Um, and I have found a way in which I can answer the questions right within the body of, of your letter so that I don't miss any questions you might ask and I don't get distracted into other things. Uh, while I'm answering those questions. Also on the website, you will find uh, a donate button and you can pay uh, or you can uh, contribute as the Lord speaks or sow seed as the Lord speaks. Uh, we ask that you consider doing that to help us continue to defray the costs of getting the message out. This is Dr. William J. Hurst. Dr. William J. Hurst Ministries, teaching all nations the practical Word of God, and mentoring students one student at a time. May God bless you and challenge you 
with this teaching is my prayer.